my thought to you today is set your heart to understand. Set your heart to understand. Jesus taught many parables. And in the process of him teaching the parables, we want to know that he is in control. Jesus is the king of our life. Jesus used parables to convey and illustrate spiritual comprehension, meaning, and also to transfer clarity of thought to his audience. We want to bless the Lord today because he is the keeper of our lives and our heart. We want to just bless him because God is the strength of our life. Jesus used parables to convey and illustrate spiritual comprehension, meaning, and also to transfer clarity of thought to his audience. Parables are stories, mostly earthly stories, which are familiar to the audience, used to convey lessons of morality, spirituality, and comprehension. Sometimes we have this phrase, we ask, what's the moral of the story? How does the story teach you to be good, to be ethical, and to, be, and to apply spiritual principles of your life? So Jesus used a phrase that we have just read in Matthew chapter number 13. He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. Jesus used this phrase about um, 15 times, 14, actually 14 times, and John used it once. Jesus used this phrase seven times in the gospel and seven times in Revelation, and John used it once in Revelation, making it a total of eight times in Revelation. It says in the gospel, the phrase is normally like this, he that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. Used by Christ Jesus usually at the end of his parable to call our attention to understand. He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear, is always a phrase used by the Lord and by Scripture to call our attention to understand. In Revelation, the phrase go like this. He that hath and hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. It is used to warn the church against false doctrine, false prophets, tribulation, idolatry, and the lack of steadfastness. This is a phrase used once by John in Revelation when he also talk about the beast, which is the world leader at the end time, which is these end time, making war with the saints of God's people. John said in Revelation 13 verse 9, if any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. It's another phrase of simple meaning, if you have ears, set your heart to understand. Very important. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear, is a phrase that appeals directly to our understanding and comprehension and clarification. It is saying, take note carefully, listen attentively with the mindset to clearly understand what I am saying. We know that Jesus' authority is the final authority. Without Jesus' authority, there is no other authority. He has the final authority. He has the final say. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me in heaven, in heaven and on earth. That's the English Standard Version. And he said in Matthew 28, verse 19, he said, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, that mean every country and every people of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We thank God we know that name 
is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name is the name we pray in. That's the, that's the name that we ask petition of God in. That's the name that we try to draw closer to God with. He said, teaching them to observe all things. Observation is a call of attention also to our clarification and on, on, and on our understanding. That I have command you, he said this day. And behold, I am with you always. In the midst of everything that we face today, Jesus is with you. In the midst of all difficulties, Jesus is with you. In the midst of all hardship, Jesus is with you. Because he said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now Jesus transferred this authority that he has to us in the church. When in Matthew chapter 16, when he says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? That was the first question. And they said, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Others say that you are Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's the question that men say. But the question Jesus really want to know, and he said unto them, but who do you say that I am? It's very important for you to have an impression in your own heart of who Jesus is. In these last days, you don't want to have somebody else tell you. You want to have that experience for your own self. You got to know who Jesus is for your own self. And the question was answered by Peter. He said, Peter, you are the Christ. Peter said, Jesus, you are the Christ, which is the anointed one, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, Blessed are you, Peter, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Another understanding of the Father which is in heaven is the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit revealed to Peter that Jesus is the Christ. Now, we have the next verse that said, Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. Now some people have it to say that the church is built upon Peter because the, 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 the phrase or the name Peter means rock. The church is not built upon Peter. The church is built upon the revelation that Peter received that Jesus is the Christ. So the church is built upon Jesus Christ, the rock of ages, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that gives and strengthen and, and heal and deliver. And he said, I tell you, Peter, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This rock is the revelation that Jesus is the Lord of Lord and the Messiah of the earth. Verse 19 of the same scripture said, he said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. What's keys? Authority. Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 19, all authorities in me. And now Peter, I'm going to give you that authority. Peter received the authority from the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter is a representative of the disciples of Christ, is a representative of God, is a representative of the followers of God. And those who follow God in these end times have the authority of God. As long as you're living for God, you're, you're standing for God, you're faithful for God, you are the ambassador, you are the main one, you are the one that God used in these times. So don't be a voice out there as a discouraging voice, but be a voice of hope, be a voice of strength. Pray for your neighbor, pray for others. This is the time where you as a child of God can have the hope to transfer to other people. 
because Jesus has given you the authority. And he said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose. That's authority. The writer said, and they did all drink the same spiritual drink. And they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So when Peter said, upon this rock I'll build my church, it's not on Peter, it's the rock, Christ Jesus. So it's very important that we understand that we have to listen, we have to obey, and we have to submit to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has all authority, he has all power in heaven and in earth. And life will be much more peaceful when we submit to the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He that hath and hear to hear, let him hear. Without comprehension, we are not able to apply spiritual principles. Without comprehension, we are not able to apply spiritual thought. Spiritual thought proceeds from our understanding. Spiritual thoughts and principle must be first clear to us in order for us to live out our God-called life, our God-called responsibility, our God-called aim, our God-called gifting. We must have a clear understanding of what God has called us for. The Bible said in Luke, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. Jesus opened their understanding. And he said that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He was speaking to all of his apostles after his resurrection. The scripture said, Then open ye their understanding that they might understand the scripture. So if Jesus is sitting in front of them and teaching them and open up their understanding, it's very important now that we have to clearly listen and also obey what the apostles say because Jesus gave them the authority and he opened their understanding. And the scripture goes on to say, and he said unto them, it, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ. It was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. In Matthew, it says the name. In Luke, it says his name. And where's going to be among all nations? But where does it start? Jerusalem. So I want to be a part of that number that starts in Jerusalem. The church started in Jerusalem. And he said, all your witnesses of these things. Be behold, I send the promise of the Father. Here you go again. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. But wait in the city of Jerusalem, tarry mean wait, until you be clothed upon or be endued with power from an eye. The power from an eye is the Holy Spirit coming down to revive our hearts and our lives and our mind. It started in Jerusalem. So this is where I'm going to the parable of the sower that we just read this morning. The parable of the sower shows why understanding is important. And he spake many things to them in parables. Remember, why were parables used? To give you an earthly story so that you can have a spiritual understanding. Now, Take note of this parable. He spake many things to them in parable, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And number one, 
As he saw, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Number one, take note of that. Number two, some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they sprung up immediately because they had no deepness of earth. And the sun rising up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. He's saying we got to have root in God. Number two, they were stony places. Stony places had no root. Number three, and he say, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But number four, some fell on good ground. That's where you want the word of God to be in your heart, good ground. And yielded fruit, indeed, one hundredfold, and one sixtyfold, and one thirtyfold. So let's analyze this parable. There are four conditions of the heart. One, the wayside. Two, stony places. Three, thorns. And four, good ground. All this probably is saying to us, Jesus is teaching and showing how people receive his word. And these are the condition of the heart that the word is received in. The word is the seed that was sown. Remember also, and keep in mind, that the first interpreter of Scripture is Scripture itself. The Bible interprets itself. So let's see what the Bible says, in particular, this parable say about itself. So we go and we read in verse 18 of the same Matthew, Jesus said to them, therefore, hear the word of the parable. When he says hear, listen carefully, understand, play, pay close attention. Now understand the parable of the sword. The parable of the sword explained. Number one, wayside. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not, everybody say, understand it then the wicked one which is the devil catches away that which was sown in his heart this is the seed sown by the wayside your heart is the place where the word of god is sown but if you don't set your heart to understand the word of god the things of this world will slowly steal that away and the wicked one which is the devil will discourage you from serving god that's the wayside number two stony places but that which was sown in stony places is this he who hear the word and immediately receive it with joy. Oh, what a wonderful word. Woo! Receive it with joy. But he had no root in himself. He endured it for a while. But when tribulation, such as what we are facing now, our difficulties of life, our persecution arise on account of the word, immediately he stumbles. Or the King James Version uses the phrase, he get offended. Offended means it turns out of the way from following God. When you are following God, stony places will come. But you should set your heart to be overcomer in tribulation and persecution. Or else you're going to be classified as the one that received the word in stony places. Let's look at number three. He also that received the thorns among the seed among thorns is he that hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. There's a there are millions of people that hear God's word, but the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word and they become unfruitful. There are times in your life that if you could count the amount of messages, the amount of encouragement you receive from the word of God, it's going to be thousands. 
day by day, year by year. If you've been going to church from when you were young, by the time you're reaching 50 years old, you're going to hear hundreds and hundreds of messages. But if you remain the same, something is robbing you or choking that word. We must apply the word of God to our heart. But look at the one that received the word on good ground. He that received the seed into good ground is he that hear the word and understand the word, which also bears fruit. Some 130 and 64. For you to bear fruit in God, you must understand. Our heart must be set at the place that we have spiritual understanding. Without spiritual understanding, we will not bear fruit in God. Spiritual understanding is essential. The word of God said in John chapter 5 verse 20, We know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding. Your understanding is blessed. When your understanding is blessed, you have peace. When your understanding is blessed, you have strength. When your understanding is blessed, you can overcome. When your understanding is blessed, you can face obstacles. When your understanding is blessed, you can pray through and become victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When your understanding is blessed, you are not depressed. When your understanding is blessed, you have less stress. When your understanding is blessed, you can keep on serving God and the joy of the Lord and the peace of God can keep your heart to Jesus Christ. He said, he has given us understanding that we may know him that is true. Who is him that is true? His name is Jesus. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Jesus is the true God and eternal life. The Bible reminds us in Corinthians that when we pray, we pray in the spirit, but we should also pray with the understanding. When you sing, you will sing in the spirit, but you should also sing with the understanding. If you're singing a song today and you don't understand what the word is saying, it won't minister to your heart and it won't edify your heart. Like we just started out, we said, my faith look up to thee. O Lamb of Calvary, that we understand that what means. So in a time of crisis like this, our faith look up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We understand what we're saying. For else when you shall bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou say? Understanding is important for edification. For thou verily give it thanks, but the other is not edified. Understanding is for edification, which is enlightenment, clarification, and improvement. When I am edified, my understanding is established and I am fruitful. Edification is only established when the understanding is fruitful. If you don't understand, there's a lot of confusion. But you can have the peace of God today because you understand that these are end times and you're just going to draw your heart closer to God. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10, and this presentation will be available to you, many shall be purified and shall be made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Wicked people will still be wicked in the last days unless God changed their heart. And for God to change their heart, they're going to come to an understanding that they need God to change their heart. But none of the wicked shall understand. But you are who are called by the name of God. But the wise shall understand. You are classified in scripture as wise when you understand the things of God. The Bible said in Psalms 53 verse 11, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. If you are an educated professor based on scripture, you could still be a fool. That maybe 
rub some people the wrong way, but that's the fact of life. Because when the Bible talk about fools, it's only referring to people who have no knowledge or do not care to have any knowledge of God. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. He denied God. These are corrupt, doing abominable iniquity. There is none who do it good. And verse number two says, God looked down from heaven on the children of men to see if there are any who understand. God just wants you to set your heart to understand who seek after God. And when crisis come, don't quarrel and fight and fuss and make a big uh, noise about it. Seek the face of God. He's trying to tell you something. I want you to understand. You pray for your loved ones. You pray for deliverance. You pray for God's mercy. But keep in the back of your mind, God is saying something to me in this time. He wants me to understand his will, understand his purpose, and he wants me to seek him. When a heart is darkened from understanding, and darkened understanding our spiritual ignorance, our arrogance, is what the Bible classified as fool. Spiritual ignorance or arrogance is a type of the lack of knowledge or denial of God, which is equivalent to spiritual darkness. Such person the Bible calls a fool. Don't blame me, I didn't write the book. The Bible says, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. So if you say there's a God, you're not a fool. Seek after that God that you say exists. Let your heart search for him. Let your heart seek to understand him. Let your heart seek to draw closer to him. Because it's either two things. It's either there's a God or there's no God. If there's a God, you're going to be in trouble if you're not ready to meet him. Darkness of the mind is equivalent to ignorance and blindness. The Bible says in Ephesians, This I say therefore, and testified in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened. So when understanding are darkened, people walk in the vanity of their mind. When understanding are darkened, people curse out God. When understanding are darkened, people deny God. When understanding are darkened, People refuse to live for God. But when your understanding is open, you live for God. I want you to have a clear understanding today and ask God to open your heart and your mind that you will understand spiritual things. Because if you don't understand spiritual things, the enemy, the devil of our soul will try to lead us astray. He says, Ephesians 4, 18 said, Having the under their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. When our understanding are darkened, we are moved from the life of God and blindness leads our heart. God, I don't want my heart to be blind. Open my understanding that I may understand wonderful things out of your law. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God, throughout the scripture, call us to understanding. We are called by the scripture out of nature's darkness into his marvelous light. When you're called from darkness, you're called from ignorance, you're called from a lack of understanding, you're called from everything that is on the side of evil and darkness to marvelous light. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light.
Some spiritual things that we must understand as children of God, especially in these days and time. I'm not teaching at the end time today, but I'll teach them that another time. I want you to clarify within your heart that you understand that you need to draw closer to God every moment, every day, every hour. Don't make any time be wasted. When we understand spiritual things, we understand the times and the season. Why do we understand the times and the season? Is to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. When we understand spiritual things, we understand temptation and, uh, and sin so that we can become overcomers. When we understand spiritual things, we become prior warrior for spiritual warfare so that we can do kingdom exploit. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly and your life must be fulfilled in God. When we understand spiritual things, we understand faith, we understand hope, we understand love to live out God's purpose on earth. One of the most confusing things in person's life is when they are not living out their purpose. When they're not living out their purpose, they become miserable. When you're not living out your purpose, you, you become a pain to others. But when you're living out your purpose, you are the happiest person on earth because you're living out your purpose. When we set our heart to understand, we understand the spiritual gifts, which are for ecclesiastical operation. We understand the word of God so that we can do the will of God. We understand the doctrine of the Bible and the scriptures so that we can build up the body of Christ. Your understanding is very, very important. People in Romans chapter 1, I want to point this out to you. People who were, who do, sorry, vile, perverted, dishonorable things with their bodies are placed in the same category of murderers, haters of God. And guess what? People without understanding. Why would I be placed in the same category as a murderer? and a hater of God, as a vile, dishonorable person who do things with my body, why would I be placed in the same category? Because I did not set my heart to understand. Spiritual understanding is essential for spiritual life. It says here, these are the scripture. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imagination, in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, see, they became fools. And even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, it's very important for me to understand and keep God in my mind. Oh, how much if I, I wish if you were in church today and see how I want to let you get this. And when they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate. What's a reprobate, man? A good-for-nothing degenerative mind, a mind that is base of the base. When you don't set your heart to understand, you're going to have a degenerative mind. To do the things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, uh, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, debate, sorry, deceit, malignity, that's uh, excessive maliciousness, uh, whispers, that's excessive gossip, people who do things just to destroy your life by putting things over the news, for example, what we did today. Uh, what we see today in the news, people use gossip to destroy people's life, especially when they're running elections. Backbiters, haters of God, despiters of, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And they're in the same category as people without understanding. 
Oh God, help me to understand your will. I want to be planted on good ground without understanding, covenant breaker, without natural affection, affection implacable. That these are people that you cannot talk to them. They're just always ignorant. Don't want to hear from nobody. Hard, tough, don't want to change. Difficult to handle and merciful. Who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death? Not only the same, but have pleasure in them that also. So we cannot have pleasure in unrighteousness. We cannot have pleasure in ungodliness. But thank God for the grace of God. Even though many were worthy of death, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the cross of Christ. Jesus died for you so that you can't die when, you, when one of these things happen in your life. Jesus paid it all. Solomon, one of the wisest king that we know of in the Old Testament, he prayed. And he prayed for understanding. And when he prayed in, in 1 Kings chapter 3, the Lord said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Give thy servant an understanding heart. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, give me an understanding heart that I may discern between good and bad. I wish we could pray that prayer today. Lord, give me an understanding heart that I won't be deceived by sin. I won't be deceived by unrighteousness. I won't be deceived by the devil. I won't be deceived by maliciousness. I won't be deceived by jealousy. I won't be deceived by strife. I won't be deceived by envy. Oh God, give me an understanding heart. And look at what happened. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon asks such a thing. When we pray, is God pleased with our prayers? And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, which is for understanding, and hast not asked for thyself long life, or for riches, or for the life of your enemy, or, but, but thou hast asked for understanding to discern judgment, Hallelujah. Because you asked for this thing, behold, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee a wise heart and an understanding heart, so that there is none like thee before thee, so that there, sorry, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall there any arise like unto thee. Why? Because a man pray for understanding, he recognized by God. And look at what this, this blows my mind when I was reading it. You didn't ask for riches, but I'm going to give it to you. You didn't ask for honor, but I'm going to give it to you. You know, sometimes we go to the Lord, Lord, give me a car, give me a house, bless me with this, bless me with that. And we have no desire or concept to serve God. Ask God for understanding first. Seek God's face before you seek his favor. And when you get his face, hallelujah, everything will be yours. Hallelujah. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be. Don't worry about the things. God wants your heart. And everything that happened in this world is just to get your attention. I want to get your attention. I'm still stretching out my hand of mercy to you. I want to get your attention. Solomon was so wise, he wrote a few proverbs. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall Keep the discretion is when you make the right judgment. If you don't have understanding, you cannot make the right judgment. I pray today that in the midst of all these crises, that you make the right judgment. And the right judgment is that God will guide your heart, guide your life, keep your mind, and, wor and you will worship him with all your heart and soul. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. 
and lean not on thine own understanding because your understanding will fail. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. That's what Solomon said. And that get it understanding. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. I can't rub it in any enough. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Your understanding will keep you alive, actually. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. This is according to King James Version. Let me give you the common English version. If you stop using good sense, you will find yourself in the grave. Understanding is very important. Daniel was praying and he said, Behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my, on my hands and my knees. And Daniel said, and he said unto you, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the word that I speak unto you. <laughs> Daniel want to understand. He said his heart to seek God. And Daniel was already a godly man. And his angel said, stand up right, for I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word, I stood trembling. When you really reach the presence of God, no matter how holy you say you are, you're, you're shaking like a leaf because this is an awesome presence. This is a kind of glory. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel. For from the first day, look at what I have in bold. You set your heart to understand. From the first day you said to yourself, I am going to seek God. From the first day you told myself, I'm going to humble myself before God. From the first day I told myself, I'm going to turn on all the pots and the pans. I need God. From the first day, you set yourself to understand and humble yourself before God. Your words have been heard, and I am come because of your words. Daniel set his heart to understand. When he was praying, the Bible said, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, that's an evil demon over the country of Persia because Daniel was in captivity at that time when Darius was the king of Persia. But when he prays, they're, 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 you're going to learn tonight, there are different demons that handle different territories. The prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me for 21 days. So can you imagine you praying for 21 days and you never hear an answer? And can you imagine on day number 19, you give up? Don't give up on life. Don't give up on the things of God. The prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me 21 days, but Michael, the chief prince, Michael is the archangel, came and helped me, and I was left there with the king of Persia. When demonic force and influence is all over the world, God is saying, I will send an angel to help you. I will send an angel to guide you. I will send an angel to keep you. Don't worry as long as you set your heart to understand. I will help you. And came and make you to understand what will happen to people in the last days. For the vision is for many days. So the angel just came to make Daniel understand. When you set your heart to understand, we discipline ourselves to do God's will. When we set our heart to understand, we fast and pray in Jesus' name. When we set our hearts to understand, God's angel defends and strengthens us. When we set our heart to understand, we'll see God's face and God's favor. When we set our heart to understand, miracles will happen. When we set our heart to understand, 
our faith will increase. When we set our hearts to understand, God's word will be our delight. His word will be our delight. Remind you again for the second time. Many shall be purified and made white. We read the scripture before. I want to rub it in. And be tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. I want you to be wise. I want you to understand what the will of the Lord is. And Proverbs, the wisest man, Solomon wrote, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, forsake her not, she shall preserve thee. Love her, she shall keep thee. But in all you're getting, get wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. I want you to understand today. Ask the Lord to direct your life, to keep your heart, to keep your mind. Because without his understanding, we will perish in the name of Jesus.